what's up guys, Dope Center 930 here, and I have decided to make you guys a tutorial on how I uh, dual nanded my slim with that has the reset glitch hack, um, the clue runner chip as you can see right there. Uh, if you don't know what dual nanding is, it's uh, in noob terms, it's almost like having two Xboxes in one. Um, with this switch right here, with the flick of a switch, like right now it's on off mode, um, when I turn on the Xbox, it'll boot into a regular Xbox and I will actually be able to go on Xbox Live and with the flick of a switch it'll turn the reset glitch hack on and I'll be able to boot into homebrew and unsigned code so um, it's really just two NANDs that's all it is but like I said in new terms if you don't know what this stuff is then it's kind of like having two Xboxes in one um, if you want to see this Xbox in action go ahead and check out my other video I think I titled it uh, reset glitch hack slim dual nan which can be found two videos down um, the only difference is right here I added a relay um, and what that does is as you can see right now the Xbox is plugged in and the cool runner is off and usually the cool runner is always on when you have the power actually plugged in regardless of whether the Xbox is off but the reason why I did this was because now when I power on the Xbox it boots into stock mode instantly while before because the reset glitch hack it would still have to turn on through the chip regardless of whether I was booting stock NAND or not and it would take a lot longer so now that's regular and if I flick the switch the cool runner powers on so off on off on which is really awesome uh, in my opinion because I like being able to boot instantly into my uh, stock NAND and also I just feel like it's safer to keep the two separate where when you're booting into the regular dash or a stock NAND it just kills the cool runner completely so um, just it, it probably is just um, preference or my opinion I don't I can't verify whether that does make it safer or not but that is my opinion so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the tour started now take you guys step by step on what you gotta do and uh, how you gotta do it alright All right, guys so the first thing you wanna do um, in my opinion is to actually perform the reset glitch hack on the Xbox so what that means is um, I actually have a tutorial, but sadly in my tutorial I'm doing a fat Xbox, but I mean all in all it is the exact same thing. The only difference is where you read the NAND and where the wires from the cool runner are soldered to. But I'll go ahead and put a picture up um, and also a link over to actual executors forums where you can see the detailed pictures on how to actually install the slim. If you're doing it on a slim. If you're doing it on a fat Xbox, the dual NAND, then go ahead and watch my video and it'll take you through step by step on uh, how exactly to get your reset list tech console up and running so like I said um, what you're gonna do is get your NAND reader I'm using the NANDX wire it up on the slim the points to uh, get the NAND right here and right here and you're gonna read the NAND and save your original NAND and perform the reset glitch hack on the Xbox so that when you power it on the glitch boots and you boot into the hack dash and once you have gotten to that point where you have your hacked GG build image ready go ahead and flash your stock NAND back so that you just have a regular Xbox and the cool runner is hooked in but you still when you turn it on the cool runner does not boot into a hack dash it boots into a regular dash and then we're gonna go ahead and pick up from there Alright guys, step one. Step one is going to be to actually solder your Cygnos uh, Rev, Rev E V2 um, to the actual motherboard. Um, if you're using a slim Xbox 360 to do this on, you're going to have to do a direct wire connection where you actually solder wires to all the points and then solder them to the board. I will actually put a picture up and a link to where... Um, you can find a, a diagram which shows you which points on the chip go to where on the board um, and if you're doing it on a fat Xbox 360 I can put a link up as well in the picture but uh, you could really just go to uh, their uh, their actual website and they have a tutorial under their downloads but I'll put you <clears throat> I'll put you a link to the one that I'm gonna put the one for the slim to as well because that topic and that forum is specifically for dual booting with the reset glitch hack so it's more uh, specific to what I'm doing exactly so I'll go ahead and do that um, for the fats I can't really give you guys any tips because I didn't use the quick solder uh, pads that are built in uh, but for the slim th what I did was <clears throat> I got a q-tip and put a little bit of flux let me see hold on I'll show you guys <clears throat> Uh, 
Okay, so I use the same flux I always do if you're in the U.S. Pick this up at Radio Shack. Really cheap uh, resin soldering flux. I've had this stuff forever, and I've done countless amounts of boards with it, and it's it works great. It works really great, and it's cheap. So, um, yeah, what I did was I got a um, just a little Q-tip and dabbed it in the actual solder. Not solder, sorry, flux. And I rubbed it over the points that are they're actually under the tape, um, just so that when I put it back in the cage, the metal doesn't touch metal. But rub it over the points, and then go ahead and get your soldering iron. And like I've showed you in my other videos, tin the iron, and you're gonna go and brush over all of the points, um, which is called tinning, just to put a little bit of solder on all the points. And um, the wire I used, I don't have the exact. Um, diameters and all the information on it I know that it was Radio Shack's like thinnest uh, wire I, I swear I think it's like 22 aug I, I can't swear now I'm sorry guys I bought it a long time ago and I know I've said this in my video before this is like the greatest wire ever and I can't remember what it's called I threw out the wrapper and there's no identification sorry but yeah this is what I used and um, I recommend tinning the wires too it just makes life a lot easier um, as well as obviously put flux over all the points you're going to solder to. I always recommend using flux and I can guarantee you that anyone that has experience with solder, uh, soldering will tell you, you know, to use flux because it's, it makes life a lot easier and the uh, solder flows uh, quicker as well as it's not going to damage your board. As, it's not going to damage your board, you have less chance because you're not going to be having the iron near your board as often or not as long because the, uh, the solder will melt much quicker. So. Um, tin, tin the tips of the wires as well, at least that's what I did, so that you apply a bit of dab of solder on the tip of all the wire, so the second you put it on the points it'll just kind of uh, melt, or I don't know what you call it, flow right onto the actual point. So um, yeah, so that's what you gotta do, you gotta hook up the Cygnos, and uh, once you're done with all the soldering work, we'll go ahead and uh, get to the programming work. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause, and we'll continue from the computer. Alright guys, so now that we're at the computer, you're going to want to go ahead and go to whatever web browser you use and head over to Cygnos360.com and you want to head over to the downloads page. And you're going to want to download this right here, the Cygnos 360 V2 drivers, as well as I downloaded, uh, I believe this is what I downloaded, Cygnos V2 Toolbox 1.10 Beta 5, yeah, that's what I downloaded right there. So download those two things, and once you do, you are ready to hook up the Cygnos. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, give me one second. <clears throat> Okay, so make sure that you have your Xbox 360's uh, power plug plugged in, but you don't don't turn on the actual Xbox 360, just like when you're reading the NAND, just have the power plugged in, and then you're going to go ahead and get your USB cable, and connect it from the Cygnos to your actual uh, desktop or laptop or whatever you're using, so let me go ahead and plug it in. <clears throat> And when you originally plug it in, you are going to get, um, just like if you've watched my other uh, driver install tutorials, you're going to get a little uh, little thing popping up here saying installing device drivers, blah, blah, blah. And it will say unable or uh, unable to or device drivers were not installed properly. All you got to do is go under start, head over to devices and printers. Hopefully your computer won't take this long. <laughs> so 
sad. I just bought this laptop literally three, four months ago now. And it's got too much crap on it. Come on, computer. Okay, there we go. Alright, so down here you're going to see this right here, which is the Cygnos 360. But on yours, you're going to have a little uh, hazard or warning sign like that. All you got to do is right click it, click properties, hardware, properties once again. Under general tab, click change settings. And under driver, you're going to click uh, update driver. And you're going to click browse my computer for driver uh, software. And all you're going to do is locate the folder that you uh, downloaded the drivers to. So wherever you save those drivers, I told you to download a second ago off of the Cygnos website. Um, you're going to locate those and click next. Next, uh, when it says, are you sure you want to install, click yes. And if all goes well, it'll say your device has been installed successfully. And you will not have that warning sign anymore. All right, so now that you've gotten that, you are going to want to go and open up the toolbox that you downloaded from the Cygnos website. That's the other file. So you're going to right click. I, I always run as administrator, but I don't know that you have to. <clears throat> Alright, so as you can see on the bottom of here, it says status connected, so it, it has um, detected the Cygnos is plugged in. Um, the firmware version is 1.03, and it's, it's on because. <clears throat> When you have the switch set to off, it's going to be reading and writing to the Xbox 360's um, onboard NAND. But when you flip the switch on and the blue LED turns on, it's going to be reading and writing to the actual NAND that's stored on the Cygnos chip. So in this case, for the dual booting, we're going to want to have the switch turned to blue so that it's writing to the Cygnos 360. Because you should already have your GG build image, like I told you to do, um, create the reset glitch hack and you should have the GG build completely done and um, you should have stock NAND already on your Xbox 360 so once you have it so it says flash 360 like that to the side notes you're gonna click uh, program flash and all you're gonna do is browse and find your bin file um, I'll go ahead and I already wrote mine, but I'll show you guys how to do it exactly. I'll, I'll rewrite my NAND. Hold on. One second. Okay, so right here. Your, your NAND won't be in the same spot as mine, just wherever you've saved your GG build. So mine's. Okay, and you're going to go ahead and click program. And it should program the Cygnos chip fairly quickly. Um, that's one thing I like about the Cygnos. It reads and writes the NAND extremely fast, which is an awesome thing. Alright, so now you should see uh, programming completed uh, successfully. If that's the case, then you uh, essentially should have a dual NAND. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go to my other camera and show you guys the Xbox 360. Okay, guys, so now we're back at the Xbox 360. Um, uh, a couple things are different with mine than your guys' is at this point. Mine, I added a relay switch, um, which is not necessary. And the thing is, 
I'm just showing you guys how to do an and. I'm going to uh, make a separate little link at the end of the video. You can click on it'll be a tutorial on how to add the actual relay um, as well as another link to tutorial I'm going to make on how to change out the key vault on your actual uh, reset glitch hacked NAND and what that would do is if for some reason you ever connected to Xbox Live with the reset glitch tag NAND which you can't do but if you tried to and it flagged you for a ban automatically then your actual um, stock NAND would be flagged as well so you couldn't go on Xbox Live on the other side so if you change the key vault on the Reset list tech NAND when you try to connect, if it's banned or unbanned, doesn't matter because it won't have an effect on the NAND, the good NAND, the clean NAND. So um, that's what I definitely recommend doing. But like I said, you don't have to have to do it, it's just an extra safety precaution. Um, but I will be making tutorials for those of you that are interested. So, all right. Um, so, one thing that's different because the relay, when you plug in the actual power, your cool runner is going to be lighting up red regardless of whether. The switch is set to on or off, and when you power on the Xbox 360, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer to turn on because, let me explain, hold on. Okay, so, right now, when I'm in stock mode, because I have this relay, the cool runner is completely disabled and it doesn't even have a power light, so when I boot on my Xbox 360 it's gonna turn on just like a regular Xbox in regular uh, in mode but if you have the cool runner hooked up without the relay it still has to I guess glitch to turn on so it could take a little while depending on um, how good of a reset glitch hack job you've done as well as what kind of motherboard you have so let me go ahead and turn it on and it'll turn on instantly oh, I plugged in I plug in Sorry about that. I plugged in the wrong AV cable. Uh. Okay, let's try this again. Alright, so yeah, there you go. That's the regular dashboard, the non XEX, or non reset glitch tech dash. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the Xbox 360. Flip the switch on, which on mine turns on the cool runner, but yours it'll already be on the cool runner, so it won't make a difference. And then when you power it on, as you can see, the cool runner is glitching. So whenever it does glitch, mine might not even glitch because my slim, the connection's really bad on the reset glitch hack right now. I don't know why, but my slim's had a lot of problems um, with the reset glitch hack. But so right at this point, you should have a dual. Uh, dual booting console so that's uh it's really about it guys if you want to just have a dual NAND up to this point but if you're like me and you want to go a little bit above and beyond and install the uh, the actual relay as well as um, do the whole key vault swapping thing I'll show you guys how to do that right now so here at the end of the video um, you're gonna see link link for one and link for the other alright well this is dope 930 and uh, thanks for watching my video hopefully any of you that were curious about dual nanding or interested, this was helpful. Um, I would like to thank Ant-Man from over at uh, Xbox Scene, as well as Cygnos360, as well as there was a couple others, I can't remember the names off the top of my head, um, that helped contribute to his, uh, just, I guess, study and figure out, you know, how, how to glitch a slim and how to dual nand with the reset glitch hack. So, thank all of you guys, and um, you guys are awesome. Uh, so yeah, alright guys, it's Dopes for 930 and I am out.